Good morning, traders, and welcome to the Pro Trader webinar series today with Scott Pulsini, futures trader. Scott uh, streams with us every Thursday at this time at 10 a.m. East Coast time. Uh, if you don't know Scott, he's been trading for over 20 years, and during the years of 2004, uh, 2002 to 2005, uh, Scott was responsible for trading 10% of the S&P E-mini futures volume. Uh, this is a pretty incredible number, uh, and uh, it's, you know, it, you can, I mean, he was that big of a scalper. So, I you know, every tick was like, I don't know, 5,000 or you know, something like that, um, uh, or more. Uh, and uh, so anyway, now Scott focuses on both uh, trading equities and futures. He's an expert scalper and has an innate ability to quickly read the order flow and volume within price patterns. Um so I have his, uh, Scott's contact information here of his website, uh, email, Twitter. Uh, he has a trading room here. He has some educational course courses here, which uh, he's going to elaborate on. He's updated those, so you might be interested in that. Uh, he'll talk more about that. And then we have some uh, disclosures. General disclosure, all bookmap limited materials, information, and presentations are for educational purposes only and should not be considered specific investment advice nor recommendations. Risk disclosure, trading futures, equities, and digital currencies involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. So, Scott, go ahead and share your screen and uh, we'll get started. Alrighty, so I'm gonna just make sure you got my screen there. Yeah, got it. Did that work or no? Yes, yeah, yeah, you're there. Okay, uh, I'm also gonna put in the, I don't know if you wanna share this on your, I don't know how you can share it from, uh, where did you share my information? In YouTube? And you stop, stop, um, sell in. The, um, I, I, I'll, I'll put it in YouTube and in Discord, your your text okay, channel. So I'll, I'm going to put the, well, I'm going to put this document. So this document has all my stuff, including the link to my newest course that I'm releasing today. Okay. Uh, Do you want to put it in your text channel and I can copy it there? I put it in the futures text channel. Futures. Yeah. Scott will see it. I just put it in there. Okay. Your Scott will see any futures channel. Okay. I'll, I'll grab it. Uh, let me see. If you don't see it, let me know. Okay. Uh, yeah, and I'll put that new course into the uh, into the chat. Excellent. Awesome. All right. Good morning, everyone. Um, a lot going on right now. There was a ton of activity in, in NASDAQ and Russell. We'll get into that. RTY. Um, there's a Fed gentleman speaking. I'm going to speak about him in uh, polite terms right now. But... We call them other names when they come on, especially unannounced, and throw the market for a loop. But he is Fred. Fed Harker is speaking right now, so you probably hear some comments on the squawk by squawk box um, for what he's saying. Anyway, I'm currently short Nasdaq. We'll go over how where I got short, but I'm. This is a new volume event that just came in, and this is a stop run over 300. And Q stop stop sell and Q 179 contract. And some more <clears throat> so um, I am going to trail my stop to this newest event and you can see that these markets are really w ripping around you know pretty dangerous trading right now especially with our heart and talking but um, at least we got some movement so so it's usually a good cop bad cop so obviously he's saying something that's not very favorable uh, but he usually uh, these these sub fed dudes usually come out and pump the market up with positive comments dovish comments and then um uh, paul comes out and lays the hammer down usually with, with his negative talk so it's usually a big game that they do with their with their speeches but he's obviously not uh, dovish today so market is responding the downside uh, I'm sure there was some quite some diver divergences anyway I'm still short a couple here I got out of a couple we'll go over where I got out of uh, the original ones but right now I'm looking at uh, so the way I trade and we'll go over all this stuff once I get my uh, bearings here but 
the way I trade, I get out in certain areas and uh, certain important areas. We'll go over that. And then my final piece is uh, I'm trying to get down to this. I'm trying to hold it to this, the blue lug, Ludwig levels, we call them. They're in the um, the sheet that I posted. These are very important. You can see this, this area from earlier worked perfectly. Um, but I'm trying to get down to there. So I always try to hold a piece of my trade to the, uh, a major lug. It's my goal, and that's pretty pretty close to confluent with the bottom of this market profile composite as well. Sorry, this guy's a little loud. Um, let me get uh, let me get my tick strike for one here too, and then we'll go over some uh, the new market pulse by Bookmap as well. And I'll talk about my new course a little bit. That's only taken about a year to get out to you guys, but it's finally out in much better format, which I'll show you. All right, so that's that. Um, so I, I'm short. I can add to these shorts potentially off this newest event. You can see here this is 197 sell stops here. You had another 200 here added up. Um, so what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to make this one big zone. So talk about it every day. Most of the stuff I'm doing as far as the zone drawing and everything else is pretty black and white, but some days you're going to have, you know, just, these are markets, right? So you're going to have things that aren't as clear or, hey, should I add this in the zone and things like that. But, you know, so you had 200 stops here and then this was not threshold. So my threshold for NASDAQ is 150. Um, but when you get back to back that are over 150, I'll include that. So the whole idea of these zones is we're trying to find these high concentrated volume areas where there's trapped traders, right? So this is obviously, you know, the, actually I should be starting this a little higher too. We'll, get a, we'll go over why I do that. Um, let me see here. Yeah, I need to move this zone up too. So this is a pretty wide zone, but I will still trade off of it. So you'll see in my spreadsheet. Um, you know, it doesn't matter how wide the zone is or what the volatility is. You you can you adjust your risk as far as how many contracts you're trading. You don't adjust what you want. You don't impose your will on the market. Like, oh, I don't want to risk that much on this trade. I talk about it every webinar I've ever done. You know, so many traders, and it's the biggest flaw of traders, um, amateur traders, retail traders, is they trail their stops based on what they want to lose or they have this these set um set stop amounts right so like i get email i used to get emails all the time like well i, I love your style but i don't like how you risk for instance let's put this in i don't like how you risk you know 60 points in nasdaq well I, i'm adjusting to the volume events and the volatility right i don't impose my will on the market so i'll get these emails I, I like to put on NASDAQ trades, but I only like to risk 10 points to make 30. Well, okay, you know, if you put in your you put in a trade and you're risking 10 points in a day like today, you are 99.9% .9 going to get stopped out of the market just on random rotations because it's so volatile, right? The ATR right now is <clears throat> 26 points. So that means, and that, that's actually not even that high. It's, it's probably going to spike up even more. That just means it's it's rotating about 26 points, 26 and a half points every five minutes. So if you're putting in trades where only risking 10 points, you're just rolling the dice that you don't get stopped out on randomness. And algo, algo though, you can see these these algos. It looks like a Christmas tree. They just whipsaw the market when they know nothing's going on. Just like we can see with the book, incredible book map SI indicator, uh, these algos know the same thing. And when nothing's going on, that's when they start to take traders' money who love to trail their stops, right? So, and I, I'm going to show you the, the back over here. Well, first, let me get this zone in the spreadsheet because I have to trail my stop to the short position I have on. Um, so the spreadsheet is now available to you guys as well. Uh, I put that in the document. I have a subscription for it. You get it free for if you're in my trade room. But if you, you know, some people have jobs or they don't have time to be in the trade room, you can have access to the spreadsheet. And so this is the website. You can get my spreadsheet in these inflection zone charts that we'll talk about at length here these important areas these call them zones. zones uh, you can get access to those you can see like this morning the yes bounced right off it this one right so got many requests for this as a subscription so now you, now you can get access to this stuff so uh, i'm going to refer to this spreadsheet non-stop this thing is a godsend a couple guys in my room have, have helped me build this out now all i have to do is basically put in the zone prices and the atr and it tells me exactly where to get in and out so i'm not sitting there questioning uh, we have exact rules how we trade these these important volume events right in these in these zones so you just basically plug it in and you get all your prices which i'll show you 15 173 is the bottom of that zone 
plug that in. And our ATR is 26.74. I take five minute while we're in ATR. That's this. It's just a 14 period look, look back. I could find today. There you go. That's today. Anyway, that's this part of this uh, here. It's just the, the default on thinkorswim. So you can get this set this up on any trading platform. Uh, there you go. ATR is, you look see in the middle there, 26.74. So that's how I judge volatility. And the two most important things in trading are volume events, volume areas, and volatility. Right? So this thing may swipe right down to the blue log right now here. This is quite favorable. So I'm going to put this, I'm going to put my order in. A lot of times I'll judge when the market gets down to the lug if I want to hold it. Most of the time, a very, very high percentage of the time, it'll bounce right off, as you can see right here. I mean, this was, I, I make jokes sometimes on how these things are so powerful. It's the second most powerful thing I've ever seen in my trading. I've been saying it for two years now. Um, next to the SI indicator from Bookmap. But I always make jokes like you can wake up in the middle of the night, throw a, throw a, a short on at the red lug, risk a little bit above there, and then, you know, Go to sleep and wake up and get out of the blue look, right? So this one looks like that's what's going to happen here. Um, so I'm going to put this in right in front of this lug, my exit, in case I'm talking about other stuff, which happens all the time. So if that blue lug's 94.50, I'll go a couple points in front of there, 96.50 is where I'll get out of my last couple. So I'll go over how I'm short from way up here once I get my bearings here. So in the meantime, I can after I plugged in that new zone, I can trail my stop now to this newest zone. Um, so if I was short right now, I would stop out at 1950. So that's where I'm going to stop if this market comes back. If not, which is quite a ways away, if not, I'm going to let this puppy roll. On, and then we'll go over step by step what I did to get short to begin with. You can see here they're just hammering these stocks, and you can see this so. Uh, Bookmap now has their version of this, and it's like this on steroids. And it's called Market Pulse. You can see here. Let's turn on. This is the hourly. So I, we'll go over this too, but you can see this thing has just been dominated by heavy sellers this entire move down, right? So it's just another way to, to know who's in control of the market. Uh, this and the sweep indicator you can see here, they're actually trying to sweep. They didn't do so by, by sweep. Uh, they didn't do too well up here, but you can see overall it's just been heavy selling all the way down. That, that's no surprise with this move down, but um, we'll go over some. I have strategies. I'm going to have a new course on this too soon. Uh, you can trade these. Are, these are more for scalp type trades. These aren't as, as powerful as the SI indicator events, but they're still um, I'm seeing some really incredible stuff with it. And then you can use this stuff. Like I can use this to get out of trades too, as far as my position trades, where so to say, and this might happen here, right? So this comes down. Well, first of all, you can already see the selling's kind of drying up as far as market pulse is concerned, concerned, right? So you had selling, that was part of that stop run. You had selling, and now if the selling is not really doing. You know, the, the buyers are fighting back down here. Obviously, you can see it on the bubbles too, but this is telling you this may be close to the end of this move for now, right? So my point is, if I, for instance, if I were to see heavy selling, heavy selling on, on the um, market pulse. And it's just spinning and it starts to run away. Well, I can get out of another contract type of thing, right? So we'll, we'll keep an eye on this, see if it makes it to the, to the lug. The other thing that I want to keep an eye on, there was some monster buy ice here in Russell at the open. I didn't even get a chance to trade this or even look at it. Let me turn off the market pulse for right now. And this is almost three times threshold. So I have thresholds for each product. I go over that in my, my course. Um, thresholds meaning amounts that I believe are tradable, I know are tradable from watching so, these markets for so long. I'm watching these events for so long, thousands of these setups. I know what's tradable, what's not tradable, right? So anyway, that came in, which is still in this zone anyway. And then you had 314, 461, 252, 279. So somebody was buying this thing like crazy and it reacted out of here, right? So this is why this is the most important thing to be looking at. It's very important to know, hey, wow, somebody just came in and bought 1,300 contracts. Look how the market responded, right? And it's just now starting to retest this area. So I may take a long off of this event that happened a while ago. Nothing has really happened since then. So this is a perfect day too. 
Um, I talk about this in my course as well, where you want to increase your threshold. Well, threshold for Russell is 150, meaning I'll trade off of a 150 or higher event on the SI subchart. Today, you don't want to be using 150. There's four, five, three, four, five hundred coming in. Do you think 150 is important? I don't, right? Most days, you're going to only see threshold events three or three to five times in a day. Well, we've already seen 150 plus hit you know, six, seven times, right? So I'm not using 150 today. I'm probably going to go 300 or more or I'll, I'll draw the zone, right? So I need to see 300 going forward to, to draw the zone and trade off of it, right? But as far as this zone is concerned, I could potentially take, this is the you know, move away ATR, more than an ATR, obviously, retest failure. We'll go over all this as, it's, as we get into this webinar. But I'm watching this zone for a retest failure, and I possibly go long. You can see here, though, they're still hammering these uh, FANG stocks. And I know Bookmark's coming out with the market polls for stocks eventually, too. Do you have a timeline on that, Bruce? Is that uh, pretty close? I know you guys have been working on it for a while. Uh, it's already out for stocks. I mean, it, Market Pulse works on any market. I mean, do you have like like a kind of a Fang stock? Um, oh, oh, so yeah, yeah. Thing? No, like a synthetic instrument. Um, I'm not sure. I know that's um, due out very, very soon. If I'll have to double check on that. Um, it, I I know that uh, okay. it's very soon. If it's all not out already, I'll I'll, I'll get back to you. <laughs> Okay. Um, all right. So uh, let's go over this quickly where I got short to begin with. And I, I was scrambling, you know, because I'm trying to get ready for the webinar, figure out where we're at. As far as my thesis, we'll go over thesis stuff. I base the thesis off of these zones as well. You know, this, this structure stuff that I talk about or that I use in my trading in my trade room that you guys have access to as well now. Um, but I, I was lucky to get this off. I know I missed another one up here. I just heard this stuff firing off like crazy. There was a, there was a pre-market event in NASDAQ. Let's see if we can find it here. Uh, I think this was it right here. Yeah, so this is, this, was, this is threshold, and this was pre-market. So that's definitely a tradable event. And that looked like that. It did the exact move that we talk about nonstop, the ATR retest. I used to say ATR retest failure, we changed it to confirm. So you're basically confirming the move. You move down, retested the area, which happens nonstop. We actually have a trade, reversion trade for this, and that's in my spreadsheet as well. We'll go over that. Um, but because it happens so often, it's ridiculous. Anyway, that failed, so you could have been short off of that. I was lucky to get in this, and I saw uh, this did retest the zone, I thought. Let's see here, was that not that zone? Oh, actually, I didn't even get short this one. I drew it, and then the markets were ripping, and then I ended, I ended up getting short this one. So I missed out on. This is already a huge trade. Like I, this was, I have a, a very nice winner on this trade, and I missed out on. I, mean, I could have been short from up here. I missed out on about seventy points of this move, but I got short on this event right here. So you can see this is right after the open. Uh, Three hundred seventy sell ice. There's this black zone here. There's there's your typical ATR retest. Moved away an ATR almost to the exact tick, came back, retested. I took a short called the bark short. That's in my trading strategies. I'm going to have a course off of, for this and the ATR reversion trade, which we'll get into. I'll have these out in the next week. I was, I was hoping to have them done by today, along with my new course, my uh, SI indicator course. But th this is the uh, bark. It's basically any ATR retest confirmation trade of a, of a volume event, right? So that's what that was, ATR retest failure from this volume event here. Uh, and then I, what I'm doing for the barks, because they're so they're, they're a very active trade, they're all over the place, I make sure algo guy, this, so this is, we call it algo guy, this is an exponential moving average. I'll show you guys this every week. I make sure this is in my favor. You can catch some, may, there's many ways you can trade this. Uh, I post that uh, video every week. I'll post it again on the YouTube channel. Uh, explains this exponential moving average, but you can come up with like 20 different strategies just based on this. But this is just a great indicator of this this trending move. So I I will only take my aggressive my um, my barf trades and my lick trades. We'll get into those, like I said. Uh, but the the barf trade again is just any volume event, ATR retest failure. But I'm only taking it if algo guys in my direction because I went back and was looking at my trades, which you guys should all be doing. Um, so you guys, I talk about this all the time, this uh, Trader Sync. You can get discounts to this on my website as well as everything else. 
Uh, that's in that sheet that I posted. But anyway, I was going through my trades um, a couple months ago. I'm like, wow, most of my losers are, um, like with my barf trades and my lick trades, are fighting against Algo Guy. Uh, so I made sh I'm making sure that's in my favor. It's just one another filter I use to uh, to get in, in my trades. So anyway, <clears throat> I got short from way up there at the time. ATR retest failure got short right around 40-ish. I think it was, was 30 above here. And then as new events, events unfolded, I was able to trail my stop based on something that was happening in the market, not because I was trying to avoid losing money if the market came back. That is the second biggest fault of traders, retail traders. And this is a perfect example, right? I actually almost got stopped out here, but I did not. But if you're a retail trader, you catch that move, you're like, all right, uh, I'm gonna. I'm just going to trail my stop. I don't want to let this thing come back on me. And you get stopped out probably right in here. I don't know how many traders even on here probably this probably happened to. You get stopped out, and then the market moves another 200 points down, and you're sitting there holding the bag with nothing in it. You're like, okay, see this? This is why I force the market to get outside of the volume event. We have exact rules, ATR plus a percentage outside of the, uh, the volume event to stop me out so I don't get algo. See all those algos? They did not algo me. You did not win there, Mr. Algos. Right? So I'm still on this short. I did not get algoed out. Now this is heading right down on this blue lug, and I will be out of this puppy. Hold on here. Over here right now. Did I not get filled? Why am I not filled on this trade? I thought I said 86. I misread that. Hold on a second. All right, so I'm out of that. I'm out of that short. Usually I'll wait and see if it can bust through. This is where, again, where you want to use your market pulse and tick strike. You can see they're still hammering these stocks and your bubbles and everything else, that incredibleness of book map. But you can see here, let's turn on market pulse again. You see these, actually, that's the five minute. I want the hourly. There's The seller, this won't even get below the zero line. So this, I'm not just saying you blindly buy here, but I'm short. We're at an important support area. You can see they're starting to buy swipe it. The sellers have really not been... The, you know, the buyers are fighting back. This is showing you net net buyer sellers in the, on the market pulse. So this is a this has a very, very good chance of bouncing. Am I taking a trade right here long? No, because my driver are the SI volume events. But if you're in trades, you can get out, you know, when you're seeing things like this or in important areas. So I have distinct important areas that I get out as the market, you know, we'll get out, I'm going to go over where I got out of some of this NASDAQ trade because I didn't hold the whole amount this whole way down. It still was an incredible trade. So number five, I pay myself as the market makes money available to me. Ludwig levels, that's where I just got out of my last two. Market profile composite highs, lowest points of control. BWAP extreme standard deviation, so you can read all these. This is where I get out of some of my positions. So I'm well aware of taking R trades, where when you put a trade, you want to make two, three, four R on your money. Absolutely. But that doesn't mean I ignore important areas as the market heads down into them, right? So, you know, as this was coming down here, I got out of some, where was it? It was, no, it was a little higher than this. Actually, it was this, it was this prior one, which was confluent. So it was this prior market profile composite, confluent with the point of control, pretty close to the point of control. And then there was baby lug. So I got out of, um, oh, and then it was an inflection zone. So I got out of, I had four or six on, I got out of four here. I got out of three quarters because it was also one of my inflection zones, very important zone at the time. So this market opened up, <clears throat> came down into the zone. The zone was already important, and this is where this market gapped out of overnight. Get this off the screen. So this closed here yesterday, opened up here. That's a big gap. That's directional conviction. Came back. This was a balance area for the last couple of days as well. I said, okay, I'm out of, and then those other reasons I just showed you, I was out of four or six. I helped. Stock, stock sell NQ, 155 contract. So this is, this is a, now we're getting a bullish event here. So this is what I call a slug right here. This is the highest winning percentage trade that I have, by the way, in these, um, in these uh, trading strategies. Stop run at a major lug. Major lug are already been incredibly powerful, as I spoke about. And there you go. Resistance. Put your... Wake up, put your trade on, get up, out at the blue lug. Anyway, here's a um, stop run into the lug. I already know from the market pulse, the buyers are fighting back down here. Now we have a stop run. Usually stop runs are not initiative buying or selling. They're guys puking. So now I have a 
puke, this is the, you know, the theory behind it, you have a puke that's not real buying or selling into an important support area, right? Which are the, the most important support area that I've seen are the looks. So I'm gonna draw this area and I will potentially, I'm already out of my short, I will flip and go long here if I get my, if my rules adhere to this trade, trade um, area, then I'm going to flip and, and go long. I'm already out, but I'm, I've been short, now I'm gonna go long. So, so Vadim got back to me um, about the uh, Market Pulse tool for the synthetic instruments. Uh -huh. uh, it'll be about a month. It's in beta testing right now. Awesome. Can't wait to see that. Yep. That'll be, that'll be basically this on steroids. So I'm very excited about this. This isn't even a synthetic. This is just showing you the individual stocks. Market Pulse already has this, but I want to see all of these bank stops wrapped up into one and see how that how that works. That's going to be pretty incredible, I think. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So let's see Thanks here. So <clears throat> Uh, they stop running. I'm just trying to see because you, see, you can see in the sweeps indicator somebody swept this order book, and then it looks like it triggered the stops. So whoever's sweeping gets first right to the orders, and then the stops trigger. So the sweeps were occurring up here. They were trying to sweep this thing, but I know the stops weren't there because they would have fired there. But I don't know if the stops were. So you can see where the stops started here. I don't know if they were at this price, this price, this price. So I try to start where the sweeps they haven't already touched. Because you don't know where the stop runs really were because they get second right to the order book the sweeps get first right so i try to draw them based on the sweeps so i think this went down a little this is all covered in my course as well by the way just quickly i'll probably cover this a couple times here uh just to show you guys so this is a, it's a brand new format it's way more uh, orderly you can see here so my old one was you just download it and there's a couple videos, right? Because this was, that was three years ago. I had no idea what I was doing. I knew what I wanted to show. Anyway, this is way more. Here's my smiling face right there. But you get, this is all the stuff you get about the settings and what I'm doing and the drawing of the zones. And then th there's a lot of information here. This is why it's taking me so long. Here are all my setups. You have the new setups. Actually, Bruce named this setup Step Rose. That's the sixth wonder of the world. That's right. Uh, and you, then you have the using the ATR. This is how I trade. Um, so there's a lot of stuff in here, and it ends up with a nice little video of me. You get to see me since no one really sees me anymore. So I'm always out just doing the voiceovers on these webinars. So that's the new course. It's in. I put it in the link. Bruce should have it as well. Put it in the uh, Discord channel and the YouTube channel. So uh, a lot of work on that puppy, but it's nice and orderly, and everything's explained in there as far as what I'm doing. So this actually is, so let's put this new zone in. I just want to make sure this is accurate. Sorry if I'm giving you guys headaches scrolling back and forth here. Just want to make sure this is correct. All right, so that was that stop run there. So this did pop up above here, and we've talked about how you draw these zones, but the, you know, the more being in webinars with Bruce and everything, I've learned how to ac more accurately draw these, and I go over that in the course as well. So the stop run happened there. Price popped up in here. I have this set at 10 seconds. So were these part of that stop run? No, this just continues for 10 seconds on my clock just to help me incorporate a lot, you know, most of the activity. But you can see, like, this was the stop run. That's that. Actually, I probably don't even have to go down this far. It kind of kept coming in. I think that's okay. But um, I go over at length on how to draw these zones accurately. So that's the zone I'm going to use for this. Um, 15, 090, 50 to 87. This should be on an exact price. 750. I'm going to plug that in my spreadsheet and I'm going to potentially go along here. Actually, I'm going to take a slug only if we don't get new lugs. If the new lugs develop, then the slug is off the table. There's new lugs, so no, no slug on this one. So we move down to the next one, then I'll take it. But it's telling you something too when you draw new lugs, it's giving you powerful information. There's so many ways you can use these with support and resistance, just the basic stuff, targets, basic stuff. And then when you draw new lugs, you can start coming up with a thesis on what's going on. So the tendency for lugs, first of all, to draw new lugs, something powerful is happening in the market, which is changing your parameters for these things, right? When you draw new lugs, the thesis you can come up with, it should hold prior blue, current directional yellow, if it's gonna remain bearish, and Q, right? Stock, stock sell and Q. 160 contract. Here's some more stops. So we'll get over to that. But for right now, I am expecting next blue if this can hold prior blue yellow. That's the thesis. Just a, just a short-term thesis on these things, right? If this market 
rebounds, it gets above prior blue direction of yellow, then I would expect red as my next target, right? So you'll see, um, it's just every market, these things are they're incredible, right? So I can't give them enough praise. I, you know, I don't add things into my trading very lightly. It took me many months, about two years ago, I had a guy bragging. He had made, you know, he was trading micros and he was doing so well with the lows. He made like a million bucks in a few months. And he kept telling, he's in my trade room, and he kept talk, talking about them. He's like, these things are incredible. And then I watched him. I watched him for a few months before I even mentioned them to anybody. And then now they're an integral part of my trading. So you'll hear me talk about them quite often. Um, all the information is in that uh, document and the, her, her spreadsheet and or, I mean her website. And you, you go there, do the free day, three day trial, and then you get access. Uh, you get special pricing, so on and so forth. If you say you saw it on the webinar. <clears throat> All right, so this is the most recent volume event. Let's draw this. An NES today, really surprising so far. So we'll see. Or there might have been. So here's another thing, too. You want to get this alert window up on here because I hear stuff, but I don't hear it a lot of times, especially when I'm on these webinars. I'm covering so many markets. So you can see everything, everything that you've been hearing is laid out in text form here. How you get that you just go to your main book map page uh, which is this one here and you just go to file and alerts and then now this will pop up so you can see them and you can hear them. so i don't see any yes at all i have a lot of rustle a lot of nq a little bit of gold actually i was long gold so i'm long gold and I'm going to quickly draw this zone, and I'm going to trail my stop to this new event. This is, like I've been telling you, this is how I trail my stops, right, based on something that's happening in the market, not because I want to, don't want to give back my profit, right? I don't want to give back my profit, but I, the market doesn't care what, what I want to do. The market cares about volume events and volatility, so that's why I will draw this big buy ice event that just came in, and I could potentially add to this trade, too. So uh, that's that. I'm going to just change this color. So I know what type of event it was. I try to use light blue for my whatever color that is, colorblind, for my buy zone. So you can see this was almost 300 buy ice right there. And I got all the prices here. So you can see you can see it on the on chart as well. This yellow line, right? So this thing plateaued after this point. So any price that came in after that's not really part of the iceberg. And again, I go over this at length in my course. But like this price, I, I, my old way of drawing these, which was incorrect for a long, long time, was I would incorporate every price because I have this draw for me for a minute. Well, is, this is me putting another example of me imposing my will on the market. Just because I have it for a minute, does that mean every price in here was part of that iceberg? No. Once it plateaus, that was it. That's the iceberg, right? I don't have to incorporate these prices. So it, it can be very confusing, especially I've been trading them different for a long time. I would usually bring them down here. But, you know, I've adapted and Bruce taught me the, he showed me the light. So this is the, the correct zone. 1947, 1946.6. Again, I go over it at length in this trading course. The first couple videos are how I used to draw them, right? And then we get into live trading examples and then updated on how to really draw them. What's great about this format too, I can add things in going forward and you guys get access to it, right? So if I go in there and there's a new, I can, I'm gonna put in new events. I have another setup that's in the works um, that I could just put it in there and you guys have continuing education. So that's another great thing about that medium I'm now using instead of just flat out downloads that I used before. 1947 and 1946.6. I just want to trail my stop because I was already long all over that. If I get a chance, I was pre-market as well. Uh, I already forgot the 1947. So I was long from 31, last two digits. So now I can put in this zone, 1947. My stop is at 89. So you're going to watch all those changes now. Right? Plug in my plug in the new zone, 1946.6. ATR. It's ATR. 16.4, and it's rotating about 7, 16, 17 ticks every five minutes. So now my new stop price is 47. So I just saved myself 60 ticks of risk here because what I did originally was I took a long off of this volume event down here, right at the open. Actually, no, it was before the open. Hold on. It was right here. So I incorporated both this buy ice and the sell ice. In one zone, right? I just want trap traders. So there's there's activity here. Somebody's placing bets in this area. Somebody was wrong. 
I take advantage of it. That's what we do. That's what my trading style is, and that's the most powerful trading style you'll ever see, in my opinion. Right. So now my stop was originally an ATR below here, which was in the spreadsheet at 89. Right. Last two digits, I had it an ATR plus 10% below that zone. Now when I get a new event, I trail my stop to an ATR below there. So that price is now 47. So I will make, if this comes back and stops me out, actually I should already be stopped out. I got lucky there, right? So I just, 47 had touched, I just already touched. So I'll put it in if it comes back. I, got, I basically got lucky, I should already have been stopped out of this trade. Yes, I said I got lucky, doesn't happen very often. 47, and now I actually wanna see some areas, the only thing I haven't been paying attention to. Talk about the areas that I get out, where are we at? And as I just bouncing around here. Um, where are we going? All right, so this is, let's see here, this is today's trade. All right, so I wouldn't have been out at the bottom of this market profile because that's basically right where I entered. Yeah, that's about 20 ticks I could have got out of something there. This is getting close to this uh, yellow lug. If it gets up to the yellow lug, I'll get out of half these. I have 12 on. I'll get out of 12 micros. I'll get out of six of them at uh, that yellow lug. Is that a baby lug up there too? It looks like a baby lug as well. So I'll get out um, probably, I'll say 95. So I'll get out of six at 95. I'm paying myself as I'm right. I pay myself as the market makes money available to me. I will hold a portion then until another important area, and that could be the top of this market profile composite, potentially, which will be confluent with extreme standard deviation of VWAP. My final I always try to keep a piece on until a major lug, right? So I'm a, that's where you get your mul our multiples. I get out of some as it makes money available to me, but I'll try to hold a piece. That or an opposing volume event is where I'll get out of the final piece. So that's if it doesn't come down. I should have already been stopped out of this per my rules. Maybe, maybe I'm walking around lucky and I don't even know it. And if you know that movie, you get an A plus. I might even give you my course for free if you know what that movie's from. You got five seconds to answer. Five, four, three, two, one. Anybody, anybody answer that? Bruce, what movie that's from? Uh, no. I, I literally, I, I, I'll, I'll give you a hug too if I ever see if you know that movie. I, I didn't even, I, I, it kind of blew by me what exactly was the quote. You might be walking around lucky and not even know it. Because I was saying I got lucky and I didn't get stopped out of that gold trade when I was supposed to be stopped out. Anybody know? Anybody putting it in? Nope. Wow. That was for a free course, guys. That's a thousand bucks. Um, let it ride. Richard Dreyfus horse racing movie. Ah, uh, guys are embarrassing. I'll give you guys more chances. Not for a free course. That was that was one in <laughs> one shot. But I'll give you more chances to at least get on my gold star list. My room's pathetic too with movie quotes. I, that's all I do is quote movies as I'm trading. Nobody ever knows any of them. <laughs> <clears throat> all right. Any questions, Bruce, so I can take a breath here? Yes. Um, Sean is asking about the RTY, um, you know, the Russell uh, uh, ATR trade. Uh, um, had it been taken, uh, it would have hit its stop loss, stop loss right? Uh, the ATR trade? Yeah. Yeah, but we have, we have distinct rules uh, in my room on when you don't want to potentially be taking these ATR trades. I don't know if we have disqualifiers, right? So this is the second part of the spreadsheet where we're literally taking advantage of um, a move back to the volume event, right? Because they happen so often. So if you guys have watched any of my webinars for the last five years, all I ever talk about is you get a volume event and I say, okay, it's about 70%. This is just from my, my um, you know, watching so many of these. Uh, it's 70% or more that the, the market will retest that volume event. What you don't have three. Stock sell and Q. 170 to contract. So we got a new event. Um, so, and, and NASDAQ. So, like grains, bonds, natural gas, you want to use the three. I want to use the eight, three ATR. That one seems to be work the best. So you can see they're all on here, right? So um, we'll go over the Russell here in a second. But this is part of that, the spreadsheet that you guys have access to here as well. You know, if you get in here, you have access to the ATR trade. I'm going to have a video uh, course on this here in the next week too, how to exactly trade this, but it's pretty self-explanatory. You put your... Everything's based on the zone, ATR, and then you go down here and here's all the prices. So if I wanted to go long on the event, we'll do it here for the NASDAQ. We'll give this one a try. 
the AT I don't usually take the ATR trades on these webinars. I can't keep up with them, they're, they're too, especially the ones. It's just I can't do it. I'm watching too many things. So here's 202 sell stops. But yeah, it looks like that ATR trade would have got smoked in Russell. But you know, there's bigger stuff going on. And the other thing, the main disqualifier, why you shouldn't have that on, whoever asked that, I think he's from my room. I don't know why he's not asking my room. But um, when you got Fed guys talking, you should not be putting on ATR reversion trades. New information is hitting the market, right? ATR reversion trades are playing for these algos. So um, for reverting back to the zone, let's see where this started. So I know, see these sweeps come in. I came in. I know it didn't. You see these this, these black bubbles. I know that the stop run didn't happen there or was not there because this price traded and kind of you see blue bubbles. So that didn't happen. You see blue bubbles there. So I'm going to draw that zone starting there because, again, sweeps get first right to the order book. Who knows where they were, the actual stop run in this in this um, this pattern here. So that came down to there. It was 100, but it came in more down at 172 there. So I'm going to incorporate those as well. See if it spiked even further. It spiked a little more there, right? Not a ton, but I'll just incorporate all these, right? Because I'm just trying to get this one. It actually did cover this entire 10 seconds because it kept coming in a little more, right? So I want you could probably tighten it up a little bit. I don't know if you want to include these last 18, but that's that's good enough for the zone for me. It's a little wider, but 1509.50 is the top of the zone. Plug this in, and we'll see if we can get an ATR trade here to show you how this works. Very short term trade. We have another question on ATR as well in Discord. Uh, so uh, it seems like uh, one, a one ATR failed uh, many times today. Can you take a quick look at the NQ? Um, this was right. 15, 20 minutes ago. So, right, um, right. It failed multiple times, guys, because you know, you don't know. I don't talk about this trade all the time on the on these bookmap webinars. I talk about them all the time on my favorite. I still don't take them in my dream that often when, while I'm on the webinars because it's just too hard for me to keep up with them. But there are many disqualifiers why you don't want to be taking ATR trades today so far. Number one, hold on, I can't do two things at one time. You know, 40 quarter. You have a Fed guy talking. Do not take ATR trades when Fed dudes are talking. That's new information hitting the market. You will get your head ripped off, as I'm, I'm assuming you did if you're taking that trade, right? Fed, Fed guy's talking. He's not talking anymore, I don't think. Um, and then if there's high relative volume or high volume bars. Um, well, I'll show you what I'm talking about here in a second. Let me get this one second here. All right, so let me plug this zone in. So if, if you are in my, obviously the people that are saying that I think are in my room, right? Or else how would you be taking the trade or know what you're doing? So you can trade that it's allowing everything that I tell you guys. You don't take ATR trades when Fed guys are talking, first and foremost. Oh, I just got filled on something too. Oh, I got filled on that gold uh, yellow lug. So I, I still have half my gold on i was i had 12 on remember i got lucky didn't get stopped out here's the yellow lug I'm a, we'll look at that in a second i'm out, I'm out of half right there and now i'm trying to see if i can get the red lug we'll go over that here in a second let's plug this in all right so if i'm taking so there's two different trades on this spreadsheet position trading that's these trading strategies right and then the reversion strategy so if i take the, I, I don't know if this guy's still talking is the only problem here i don't like i just got done Giving you the verbal lashing on, I don't want to be putting on trades if he's if he's talking. Reversion trades. I'll put on position position trades, right? Because I'm looking for bigger moves. But this is, you know, this is a different animal. 16 quarter would be the one ATR, right? I get down to 16 quarter now. So I can take this one of two ways. I can take it the reversion trade, one ATR away from the zone, playing for a move back to the zone, one ATR below the zone, back to the zone. So we'll see which way this breaks. This is like an algo. There's no subjectiveness here, right? You put in, your prices are all here. You go along at 16 quarter, you stop out at 84, you're out at 37.50 back to the zone. That's the one ATR. If you take the two, you're in at 92, you stop out at 59 quarter, you're out at the, back to the zone. All three of these are back to the zone. That's all you're playing for. The tendencies for these markets to rotate back to these volume events is unbelievable, uncanny. It's ridiculous. There are guys, so one guy in my room did it last week. He, for the last two weeks, he, he put up his stats. He took 42, I, this is just off of the top of my head. You can go, you can see it in the room. He posted it. He took. RTY, I sized for sell RT. 
161 pound I think he took 43 ATR, one ATR trades. 40 of them were winners. <laughs> I'm not saying that the trade's 98%. That's way, that's that's just an outlier. But the point is, they're ridiculous. So you can go in there as names of Big Al. He's in my room. You got another trader in there that's made... You know, I don't like talking about, you know, the actual profit and stuff, but because he had a big account, he started with 150 grand, but he's made a, uh, he's made 10 times his, his account size since February. And he trades ATRs and the Bark trades. So his name's Lance. He's in there too. He's accessible as well. He answers questions on what he's doing. And then basically all he says is I follow the rules that Scott puts out. That's what he says. I'm dead serious. All right, so anyway, let's see which way this trades uh, or this moves, and I could uh, potentially take a reversion trade. I want to make sure, so there's a couple of disqualifiers. This will be in the reversion course that I'm putting out here in the next week. So I'm not talking today. I want to make sure, one, the relative volume is not off the charts, right? So if I'm seeing relative volume at 2 to 1 or higher, I'm not taking ATR trades. Personally, I don't take them. You can do whatever you want. I don't take them. That means big money's playing. This is not, this got close to two to one. This is kind of a coin flip. It's kind of dying down. You could take this one. We'll, we'll give this one a shot, but you know, it, it was elevated and it was elevated, you know, for the last however many minutes, right? That's number one. Two, let's look at the footprint. The footprint's not gonna be as indicative today because the ATR is much higher, uh, but we look at a right, we have a range of bars and I know if I'm seeing over 30,000 in the yes, so there's nothing going on in the yes, then we haven't heard any subs in there either or over 10,000 on these range bars. I'm using, um, yes, I'm using the two and, a half, uh, two and a half point reversal bar, so it won't draw a new bar until it reverses two and a half points. And then if I see over 30,000 contracts or in an area, so here, here's a good example, right? So it hasn't happened, but this combined in this area is over 30,000, right? I like to see it condensed, but you could say, say a volume event happened right here, and then you move away. Well, do I want to be hoping that the market comes back to the volume event when I know a bunch of buyers here are underwater? There's a you know huge volume coming in, and these guys are underwater, and they're going to have to probably puke out. Do I want to hope it comes back? No, that those are not good trades. That's why I keep an eye on this. And this may be confusing. I don't talk about this very often on these bookmap webinars. I talk about it all the time in my room, and I'm going to have a course on it. But in the meantime, that's a disqualifier for, disqualifier for me. One hundred sixty contracts, and then Nasdaq. So this Nasdaq's more volatile today. So you know, I usually just say ten thousand. There still hasn't been a ton lately in these range bars. So I could take this ATR trade, is what I'm saying. So let's see what happens here. And the ATRs, you know, this is it right here. I think. Hold on. Look at that. Short at seventy three fifty. Stop out at oh five seventy five. So let me get this. Uh, I got the ATR. That I mess around on this computer. I got a couple of different accounts. I'm doing market pulse trades on one of the accounts. They're Apex accounts. We'll get into that too. That's a great thing to use if you're practicing, working on your trades, um, don't have a ton of money to be trading where you can't lose it, then Apex is for you. I'll go over that here if we get a chance to. It's just a trader funding company. I know there's a ton of them out there. That's the best one I've come across. I've been using it for two years. I use it for the trading strategies and they do everything they say they're going to do. So, and there's not a bunch of games that they're just trying to take traders' money for their to, to do the tryouts. They're they actually fun traders, so that's why I use them. All right, so let's see here. Do this account here. So I'm going to. So everything's in here, right? Here's your prices. I'm going to short at 73.50. I could put on eight to risk. I'm risking 500 bucks. I'm risking 10% of this apex apex account. That's a, a lot of money. That's a big risk. Percentage-wise, if you're trading your, your real account, I would only be risking 2% on any of these trades. This one's more I'm being more aggressive at the Apex. I'm going to put on 8, 73.50. That's the one ATR. If it gets up there, let's see what happens here. Um, again, these are so hard to keep track of, guys, on these webinars, so I'm going to do my best. I'm going to put the, I'm just going to put in the entry and the exit. Entries at 73.50. I stop on at 0.575. So this is less than a one-to-one -one trade. Um, which, you know, usually you would think, so I'll show you this here in a second, what, the, what winning percentage you need to be able to be, break even. Hold on a second, let me, this is why I don't do these in these webinars. This is just so hard for me to, right, and then, so I gotta wait to get filled and I'm out back at the zone, right? So what, what am I doing here? 
There's two different things I can potentially do here, position trade and a, the reversion trade. The reversion trade is I'm just waiting for the one ATR out of here, which is right now. But you got to, this is another thing, you got to stay on top of your ATR, right? Let's see what this is. It's up to 29.36, so my prices are going to change, right? Now my actual entry is going to be different. It's at 76. I had it at 73.50, so I'm going to move that up to 76 because ATR, I'm, this is all about the ATR, right? So I have to adjust until I get filled. And then my stop's going to be 11.25, so that's a six-point difference just because the ATR changed a, a few points, right? All right, so that's working. All right, what was I? I was going to show you something else. I forgot. Hold on here. This is why I don't do this trade. It's just it just takes too much out of me on these one. Oh, so what I'm doing is <clears throat> I'm playing. This is the most recent volume event. There's your stop run. These markets have a ridiculous propensity to hit the ATR and come back to the zone. That's what we're trading on, right? So how this was all born is we were going over. I was teaching stuff out of the trading in the zone document. I already lost where that is. There's that right there, right? And it says this is straight out of the book. Exercise. To show if you have an edge and you can trade like you can be the casino and trade if you can trade think like a casino where you're trading in probabilities you can make money so we literally did this as an exercise i just said hey you know what let's um let's use the because uh, i always say these 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 markets come back to the volume events the si volume events i said well why why, why don't why am i i keep saying it's 70 percent well, if I have a 70% trade on my hands, why am I not taking advantage of it? That's how the trade was born. It's, I started it a year ago, it was September of last year. And most of my, not most of them, a lot of my traders in my room take this trade excuse, exclusively. Like I said though, so this is a perfect example with Russell. Yes, they return to the zone. How many ATRs does it get out of there before it comes back? Well, you know, different days are gonna be different, but most time it's one and two. This one went probably five, but look, lo and behold, Right back to the volume of it, right? Actually, we had some new stuff here too, so we can trade off of this as well. I can't. I'm not going to do the reversion trade in there. I can't. I just can't. I can't keep up with these. But so here, this is the newest event. So th there's a couple of different things I can do here. I don't want to confuse you guys because this is more advanced stuff, and again, this is in my course where I go over advanced strategies of trading these things. But you can see the sell I started here. You can see it on the on chart, right? Look at the on chart line, the black line. That's this. So it came in, it was 170. Remember I said I wasn't trading under 300 though? Well, this got up to 300. So I'm gonna trade this. I'm gonna incorporate all these prices that happened in this because it kept spiking down. So let's draw this zone. It happened to be right on top of that other zone. So that price might be off a little bit. Check it. I used black for my sell ice. Then that came down to here. So that you can see the line there, but it, this did spike a little lower. Actually, I guess it was there. So I should be drawing the zone to there, but it came down during this. So I'm just going to incorporate on this one. I'm going to incorporate all the prices. So there you go. That's how I like that zone. A little subjective. I know most of the stuff's black and white that I do, but you know these are markets. You got to sometimes adapt. And actually, even add more stuff here. You had another 99 that was still on the zone. Then you had another 244. That's all on this zone. So I like that zone. So that's the most current zone. So what I can do here is potentially, depending on algo guy, if algo guy is bullish, I can take a long off of that original setup and then trail my stop to this newest one. So this is still bullish. It has not pulled the blue under the under the red. Let me uh, I'm post this for you as well, guys. So this is from my trading room. I just want to show you these reversion trades too. Um, hold on. This is in this channel here. So if you guys want to watch this? Talks all about actually some resources. This guy here, watch this YouTube video. I'll post it in the YouTube and in Discord, I guess I think I could do it in there. This explains a ton on the algo guy. And you can come up with many strategies, so that's in there. Quickly before I go, so this um, the guy that helped build the spreadsheet is my moder moderator in here, Jay Labrada. The spreadsheet's a godsend guide, I'm telling you, the thing is unbelievable. Now you guys have access to it too if you can't get into my room. Um, right here. <clears throat> so you put the exact percentages you need to do and for the, if you're doing the ATR trades, break even. Here we are. So the one ATR trade, you got to be a 60% trader. So if my my assumption, and that's not my assumption, it's my experience, is true, 
if when I say these are 70%, well, if you only got you got to be 60% to break even. 70% you're making a lot of money trading depending on your size. See what I'm saying? So if it's 70% on the one ATR, that's a profitable trade. But just know if you're taking that trade, you got to be at least 60% just to break even. The two ATR is, you know, you got to be as 42%. So if you're a 50% trader, 50-50, you're making very good money on that trade. And then the three ATR, all you got to be is 34%. You're a 50% trader on that trade, you're killing it. So that these are the percentages you need to break even. And you can learn all about the ATR trade in my room. And I'll have a course on in here very shortly. But I'm, I try not to get too into it because it's just it's just too much on these webinars. Um, all right, so let me plug this new zone in and we'll see how we're going to trade this. So my original entry off of that first zone, this is what whoever was complaining that the ATR didn't, ATRs didn't work while Paul, or not Paul, but well, the other Fed guy was talking. Um, If you would have been shorted all these prices, you would have got run over on these because the moment. All right, I'll come back to that. I'll come back to this zone too. I want it because I know there's a lot of ES traders. I don't know why because the market sucks. I hate it. And that's where I made my millions of dollars and I still hate it. So this one did not get filled uh, for the 1 ATR. So no go on that. I could still potentially take the, two eight, the 1 ATR coming back if I get a chance, but let's focus on position trading on these webinars right now. It's just too hard, guys. I can't keep up with them. All right, so now we finally got a uh, volume event in ES. So let's draw the zone and then we'll see where we're at. And we'll put a position trade on potentially. So once again, you see these swipes, they get first right to the order book. What am I doing here? Why am I not just drawing the zone of there? Well, because these stops could have been all the way up here where these sweeps started. They get second right. So I don't know where they were. So I got to start them at these sweeps. I know it wasn't at this price actually, because this price already traded. That would have triggered the stops if the stops were up here, right? So they can't they can't be up there, but I don't know where they anywhere in there. So I just started where the sweeps started after those prices, which would be right here. That's that. Take it down to, you can see it on the on chart as well. Helps you draw these zones. I'm not gonna incorporate this. Actually, a little more came in. These were 700. I am going to incorporate this one because it did spike down a little more here. If you see a plateau, then you don't have to incorporate the prices. But this one a little more came in. So I'm going to If you're new here, many new traders, you might be like, what the hell is this guy doing? It'll all slow down, get the course, or join my room, or both. I do this every day. Well, I didn't want to do that. Hold on. I'm not using my hotkey. It's supposed to be there. It's all over. Here. <clears throat> yellow and white for my stop runs. I just want to know what kind of event it is on the chart, right? All right, so that's that. Plug, let's plug the zone in quickly. 44.26 down to 23 quarter is your zone. Go over to the yes tab. Six point two seven. That's a pretty high ATR for yes. Right? I'm surprised this has just been one setup so far. All right, so that's that's done. So what do we need to see to make this a bullish or bearish setup? Well, the way I judge these again from watching four point two million of them is if the eight, if it's able to push an ATR outside of this zone, then I consider that a bearish event and I can trade to the short side. So let's see what that price is. This is all in your spreadsheet right here. Validation price. If it touches seventeen, this is a bearish setup. It's not got down there yet. See, just a quick look. I'm not going to put this ATR trade on, but if you're taking it, you get long at 17.50, the one ATR. You're short it. You're out at 10, stop out, or you're playing back to the bottom of the zone, which is 22.50. But we'll just keep an eyeball on it and see if that works. Um, I'm not seeing any disqualifiers. I, you know, I already know the volume is not high from the footprint, so you could take this trade as long as this guy's not. I, I'm assuming he's not talking anymore. I could be wrong. If, if guys are talking, if guys are talking, don't take reversion trades for the fifth time. Right, so we'll keep an eye on that. Let's see where we are bigger picture, what we got going on for position trades. It's not a bigger picture. That's a five minute chart. This is a bigger picture. So this is in, in an easy zone as of right now. I actually did have an easy zone here, but I already traded through it. I had, had it based on this stuff here. So this could be, but I, it already traded through yesterday. So I don't like that. So <clears throat> this is basically the balance area. We'll couple the balance area this market launch from. So 
I'm, I would not take an Izzy trade here into this zone. I would take an Izzy trade inflection zone. That's all this is here. This trading strategy here, Izzy. Take fade trades with moves into prior inflection zones. So again, this is what you get. And guys, this, this website's brand new, right? So this guy just built it for me. It may have some bugs, but you get, that's what you get for this, right? You can draw these yourself, but I draw these for 17 futures markets every day for my trade room, right? So you get it for free if you're in my trade room, but if you want them, you don't want to join the trade room for whatever reason, I don't know why you wouldn't, but if you don't, you come in here and you get them on the left-hand margin here, right? So this is the zone, zones I put up, and you come in here. I'm going to have a spreadsheet version too where you can just download it and copy the spreadsheet and then be much easier, I understand. I'll, I'll get, that's the next on my list, but anyway, we're not in an inflection zone. Let's see where we are on the lugs. Maybe this is a slug. Take a peek. <clears throat> So, see our chart, you got to refresh these many times. I know there's new lugs here. So, that's now we got new lugs. So, it blew through that lug, and now there's new lugs. So, what do we just talk about with NASDAQ for a short term thesis? They had enough power, or whatever your variables are, to draw new lugs. Well, this should hold, if, if you think this is going to continue lower, this should at minimum hold directional yellow prior blue which should not get above there if it gets above there something's up and it's probably headed to the red that's how you can think about it thesis wise right i'm not saying i'm bullish this market we come up with thesis based on different things every day we come up with thesis based on market profile what am i seeing on market profile this just came down to this prior one this is pretty noisy i like to spread these out um let's see if any of these merged yeah so i would merge I would merge these two anyway let's see here So that's the most recent. Let's draw that real quick. And it's merging single day value areas where 70% of the trade occurred in those days, merging them together, and you get a more powerful area. So this most recent composite's here, and you can see this came right near it and right near this old one and bounced. So that's bullish short term. If this gets above the blue, that's bullish, right? So I'm coming up with a thesis. So what, what does that mean? I trade both ways, right? Even if I think the market's going to die, which I hope it does every single day, I will still trade to the long side because I'm a day trader. But if I get trades in line with my thesis, so for instance, say this this holds, this turns into a bullish event. Well, I could potentially trade this. If my thesis is bullish, I'll trade, I'll put on bigger size, right? It's like an A plus trade. I'm trading either way, but if I get, if I have a bunch of things that are bullish, then I'll just put on bigger size, right? We'll get into that a little bit on the spreadsheet. But this looks like this is going to be a bearish setup. And this is what I expect right now because it has not. Yeah, it's potentially bouncing off of there, but this is still holding prior blue directional yellow. So if this gets motoring down, I'm expecting blue look. And if I get if I get short, that's going to be my target. And plus, you got this inflection zone. So, so lots going on down here. So I'm going to keep a close eye. If I do go short, I'm going to keep an eye into that zone. Algo guy is bearish. So I can take barf and lick trade, bark, I'm sorry, we renamed it, bark, blind ATR, retest confirm. Someone in my room helped name that one. Um, but this is bearish, so I can take trades to the, to the downside off of those trading strategies, bark and lick. I can't take them to the long side because the algo guy is bearish. That's how I, that's what I use, because that's like my filter. It's a very powerful filter. Um, I don't see a lot of liquidity down here. I just see this one little band here. Would I get into that trade? No. Why? Because if liquidity's down here, yeah, the risk reward's great. Wrong color. Hold on. Risk reward's great for that trade. Is the risk reward great to put on a lick trade to trade it? Because the lick is just literally trading the liquidity and you're out. Do I want to trade? Which this is a spot, very important spot gamma level as well. That's why you're seeing liquidity there. Point is, am I going to take that trade risking? above this zone maybe I'm probably risking like 15 20 points to make three points no that's not a good risk reward on that trade i won't take that but if we go atr retest failure i will take the bark trade blind atr retest failure so let's see if this uh let's see if the atr reversion i'm not going to take this one we'll just eyeball it so again make sure you're on top of your atr that is 6.31 now that it. 1750, you stop out on 10, you're just playing back to the zone. Remember, this is a less than one to one trade. You got to be 60% or higher for this trade to be see, at least 60% just to break even. So let's see what happens here. But for position trading purposes, back up to this part of the spreadsheet. If this touches six, I'm sorry, 17, 
this is an official bearish setup, right? That's an ATR outside of the zone, and that's how I determine my setups. Again, this isn't just, you know, from the seat of my pants. This is from watching a million of these things, right? So if we go 17, retest failure, I will take the short. That's that. Uh, any questions, Bruce, before I... I may have missed something in crude. I heard it. I just didn't do anything with it. There's crude. <clears throat> yeah, there's a question. So you guys see why I can't do these reversion trades. It's just I'm, I'm watching 15 markets. Go ahead, Bruce. Sorry. Uh, yeah, there's a question on uh, uh, are you only using aggregate stops to draw zones? Um, they aggregate, but no. I mean, I'll, I'll use individual. What I don't understand, Bruce, and I actually said this in my course that I put out last night, um, I'm not understanding. So when you, when you have on the on chart here, where is it at? Stops. Can I, there it is. Why? Okay, show, show only stop runs. Well, I, I've always known stop stops to be stop runs. So what, what is this like? Here, let's just look. Well, there can be just, in, it would, it would um, show. It doesn't change anything there. It, 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 it will if, if you like, um, uh, but a stop is a run. That's the thing. It's a no, sweep. No, no. I mean, it, well, it doesn't. It can be just one price level, though, and it would filter out. Um, you know. So it's basically saying anything over one price level. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, it's okay, but you could see like this didn't, doesn't change a thing for me on this one. So I just have it unchecked. I, I just want to see all stops. But yeah, the, most of the time the stops are aggregated, right? But you can see all this. this is the yeah, I mean that's a that's a beautiful that's a beautiful one there. I mean, like that's right. multiple levels there stops being triggered. Right. So my threshold's five hundred. This wasn't quite threshold there. It was here, right? Because it, yeah, if I do one of these, let's see, I want to get in and go down this rabbit hole, but you can see. These were the sweeps, but anyway, I, I trade. I draw my zones off of the sub chart. I use the on chart to help me, and this was the initial part of this. But then they they, they kept coming in. And it, it went all the way down to seven fifteen. That's why the zone incorporates more prices, right? So yeah, and then look at the retest right back to where that stop run, you know, finished, right? right? I mean, it's beautiful that's stuff. Saying. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like this is what goes on nonstop in the market. This is exactly. the ATR. This one hasn't filled yet, but um, the, the guys. This, these algos just pick up this stuff just like we do, and it's just uncanny how often these markets come back to this stuff. That's why we have a trade for it. Anyway, we still have not gone down to the official uh, bearish price for this market, so I'm going to let this rotate um, as it usually does. A little torture, and then we'll figure out there. Um, NASDAQ, NQ, this was the latest event there. That was that stop run. This looks like this did get, let's see if the, um, I never did put the ATR trade on the downside here. I actually had it working on the upside. I'm gonna cancel that. Let's see if this one, where your fill would have been here if you would have been stopped out of this one. 13.75, so well, first of all, for position trading, I need to see 11 to make this a bearish setup. Did that get down to 11? Yes, it did. So if you took the one ATR, you would have been in at 13.75, you stop out of 17.50, you're playing back to the zone. So you'd be in the one. I don't think the, the two didn't. Excuse me, the two didn't hit. You're in the one. You stop out at 87.50. So it's this is no subjectiveness. You put it in at 11. You're in at 11. You're out at the bottom of the zone, or you stop out. It's like your own your own, your, your own little algo, right? And we're gonna get this trade automated eventually too. But again, one first things first. Just be happy the damn new course is out. <laughs> All right. So if you put on that ATR trade. Actually, I'll put that on just to put it on. As I said, I was going to put the Nasdaq one on. 1375, I'm sorry. Yeah, 1375, I could put on 7. On eight. I don't even have MNQ up there. So I'll just put on one. I got NQ. So I didn't, I didn't get it out. If it comes back to 1375, I'll put it on. I'm sure that's right. Yeah, 29.84. And we'll, we'll kind of follow it and see what happens. Other than that, I'm waiting for a retest of the zone for my position trading. Remember, these are two different trades. This is ATR. This is my position trading for these strategies. We got, we definitely got the, the validation NQ price. Stock, stock sell it doesn't NQ, matter now. So here's the other thing too. If I'm in a reversion trade, so I should already been in that. The minute I hear a new event, I'm out. 
Right? I don't hope it comes back to that prior zone when there's a new zone to be drawn. Right? So I got out. I would have taken a really small loss there, and I'm out. Now we can trade off to this amount. Now there's a way, though, I can trade off the original event and trail my stop to this one. This is more advanced, and I talk about it in my course, in my room all the time. If you're confused, you'll be even more confused. But I'll try to walk you through it. So this was this event here. Stop started there. Let's see. Trying to get the right area here. This was only 80. This was 100. I'm going to start it there. Start it there. There. So I got the, this wasn't threshold, but this is pretty much where it started. You can see it on the spike. So I got those in there. And then here's the rest of it. That's where it got to threshold. 150 is my threshold, to, meaning a tradable event. And NASDAQ, 15,000 down to 14,994. I thought he, was, I thought he was saying the fat guy was still talking. So let's plug this in, and then we start anew, right? It's a great thing, man. If you if you miss a trade, there's another setup right around the corner. You don't need to be chasing stuff. Things like that, 14, 993, 75. We are 8.1. So there's a way here, potentially, let's see. No, I can't. So what I was gonna say, there's a way I can trade, wait for the retest failure of this event, and then trail my stop to that event. I can't do that because if this gets the ATR above here, if this gets back to this zone, this would make this a bullish setup. So I can't do this that strategy now. I'm not gonna get into that. It's in the course, it's in my room. I, I don't wanna confuse people more than it is, but I was just, there was a way I could potentially trade off that prior event, but there's not. So now I'm waiting to see how this event unfolds. If, it, if this gets up to 28.75, it's a bullish event. This is what I was talking about. So 28, if it gets to that zone, it makes this a bullish event. So I can't go short because the, the mo I always default to the most recent event. And I could potentially take a long, but I can't because algo guy is against me. So I can't, I'm not gonna take a long here. I could take a long if this is an Izzy zone. So we're gonna check here real close. Let's go over here. That's Algo Guy. This is what I was showing you. I can't take longs when I'm going against Algo Guy for the barf trades and the lick trades. Bigger picture. <clears throat> this is real close. So remember, these are zones, not exact prices. This one is subjective. Like, do, do I take an easy trade out of there? This is the basically the high volume note of this balance area as well. Right? So I will I will attempt a long here. It's not quite to this zone. The zone was a little lower here. And now they're starting to buy these stocks too. So I'm going to take this out of here. So what am I doing here? So I'm going to take an Izzy trade. Izzy trades are aggressive entries, meaning the first time it gets an ATR out of here. The problem with this one is, see, this is where I don't, I don't like this. I'm going to be taking along my entry price, which is on there on the spreadsheet. Now again, is at 33 quarter. It's not, and I don't like entering in prior value events. This one's below it. I usually like, so say the volume event was like right here, I'll move it outside the volume event to go long. So I'm gonna be, I already know if I put this long in, I'm gonna be dealing with some major torture. Why? Because these events are where traders got run over. So what do you think? The traders that were long, they bought in here that got run over with stop runs. Traders that were long in here that got run over with stop runs. Anyone that's holding onto this trade, what are they doing when it comes out? What are you doing when it comes back? If you have big size on and you don't puke out, which this was probably some of these pukes that the guys tried to hold on right there. This is the beauty of bookmap. You can see exactly what, what's going on in the markets. But if you are the trader that got run over here and you were holding your breath saying, please don't go down, please come back, please come back. What are you doing when it comes back here? You're getting the hell out because you were wrong. Like the price is wrong. I'm going to swear on that from uh, Happy Gilmore. Anyway, you're getting out. So my point is if I do go along this trade, it's got to get through these areas. I'm going to get tortured very likely, right? So yeah, I could put this on, but I know the torture's coming. So we'll, we'll eyeball this. I'm hoping we get more and more moved down. So I'm not questioning my area, right? But sometimes things are subjective. Like I said, this is, I mean, not slap you in the face black and white. If we get into the, into this inflection zone, then yeah, 
it's I have no problem. But this is like right above it. This is you know this is a uh, I'm thinking of the word um, not a gut call. Uh, I can't think of the word. So I gotta decide what I'm doing. I just hope it just moves down. I don't have to question it. We get another stop right in here, and then I have no problem taking that future. So we'll keep an eye on this. Other than that, this is an important zone, uh, structure-wise, right? So you had balance for the last couple of days, last three days. Here's the high volume node. This is where this market launched yesterday. If this gets through here, that's a failed breakout of the structure. I'm expecting much lower prices, right? So, uh, and then the upside, let's see this basically, and you had the balance here. That basically held right at that high volume node and failed. I didn't have a zone there. You could draw zones to the high volume zones. I don't usually draw them unless they're confluent with something else just because I'd have too many zones on the chart. But uh, that was an area that, you know, that's not doesn't surprise me that it failed. I was short from there, but I wasn't short because I wasn't short an Izzy trade. I was short the board of trade like I talked about. All right. Um, so I got to decide if I'm going to take this long or not. Let's see what ES is doing. So now they're starting to swipe too. I'm going to I'm going to take the long. This is where you can use your sweeps to help you too. Talk about this in the new course. That's another part of the course, right? I know I keep showing this, but I'm just so happy I finally got the damn thing out. There's so much more in this course, guys. Right. Talks all about sweeps over here, right there. Sweeps indicator. There you go. So I'm getting some information with the sweeps. Somebody's starting to buy this. So we saw the, the tick strike that stocks are starting to turn up. So I'm going to take this long. I know I'm going to be tortured. 33 quarter, and here's your rip. Here's what I'm risking. If I want to risk $500 on this trade, I can put on, I'm going to round up four. So it's a little more than 500 bucks. This is the Izzy trade. Let me get that on uh, this 70 in my apex. What did I say? I can put on four. 33F, right? All right, so that is working. 33 quarter, sorry. See what a what a beauty this thing is? Like I don't have to sit there and guess like if you watch an MAO webinars, I would just be eyeballing this. I'd be like, okay, um, the ATR is 30, so 30 points above here, that's right around 30, right? So obviously that's an easy one, but you just plug the stuff in the spreadsheet and it's all right there for you. So like I mentioned 10 times, you have access to this now. Scottpostnature.org. It's a new site, so bear with me if you're having problems with it. It should work fine, but don't be sending me hate mail if you if it's not working right away. We'll get it squared away. All right, so that's working. I will go long on that setup. But like I said, I fully expect to be tortured as it tries to get through these prior events. But if it can lift, lift through there, then we may get the re relief rally that usually always happens in these equity markets. And if it doesn't get there, I can still, if my validation price for this um, to the upside isn't hit, I can still take a short off of this zone too. So we'll keep an eyeball on that. Uh, let's see what, what's going on with the ES here. Just bounce around the zone. It still hasn't shown me what this is. Again, if this gets down to 17, then I can, that's a short setup, and then I can trade it. Just stay on top of your ATR, like I keep saying. TR in here is down to six now. So now, if it is 17 quarter, so we got a fed guy, if a fed guy is still talking. So I would be careful. I think that's what he just said. I would be very careful taking any reversion trades while this guy's talking, like I've been saying. All right. Any other questions, Bruce, on this stuff? I'm going to draw this. I may have already missed this trade in uh, crude, but you had 173 sell ice here. See it on the chart as well. This is, a, this is an example where you don't have to incorporate these prices. It basically stops spiking right there. There's a question on your, your exits uh, on the uh, Bark strategy. What about it? Like, um, is what's the objective exit on that? Oh, you know, like ice for Celsius. 158 contracts. Right, so I talked about that, right? So the position trading is more subjective. The, the reversion trades are slap you in the face prices. You just plug them in, you get in, you get out. It's all right there. The position trades are subjective. That's what I've been showing you guys, right? So that is where these are the areas I get out. You may have your own important areas. I pay myself as the market makes money available to me. 
Well, these areas, if I, if I showed you where I was getting out of the NASDAQ trade this morning, right? Those were important areas where I peeled out of some. Right? We, well, I've already gone over this, but remember I got out of the final at the blue lug and I cost myself another 80 points, but that was, you know, that was my decision. I, if I was staring at it, I probably would have held it to see if we build new lugs, which we did. And what did it do? It held prior, you know, our direction on prior blue. I expect that. The point is, as this market moved, made money available to me, this is one of the areas I got out. The bottom of this. This is one of the areas I got out. There was stuff up here. I already went over it. But yes, this is more subjective. I have my areas. You may have your own areas, right? So when you put on position trades, I will get out of portion. So I had six on. I got, got out of four total, you know, on the way down. And I got, and I held two. I always try to hold a portion to the major lugs. And that's where I got out of here. I didn't have a chance to watch to see if it had the power to bust through here. The point is, I got out of some as the, money made, made, as the market made uh, money available to me. So I got out of some there. There's actually, remember some there at the baby lug was confluent with something in the market profile. I can't remember right now. And then I got out of the rest there. So... This is more subjective, but you have my areas, and I go over this every day in my trade room. When I come out with this, this is coming out in the next week too, the trading strategies um, course, I'm going to go over these trades and then all these areas that I get out on the trading in the zone document, right? So that'll all be part of it, but that is more subjective. All right, I totally missed this trade. Hopefully that wasn't an easy trade. Let's see, hopefully that answered your question. But yeah, it's definitely subjective, right? It's position trading, and it was an easy trade. So this, this zone's holding, and you can see these buying tails. This is just confirming the power of this zone. And what is this zone? It's the top of this balance area. This is where this market launched. Buying tail yesterday, buying tail today. That's telling me this should move up. And if it doesn't, then watch out. So this is the line in the sand today that gets below there. I'd say we've been coming down to this high volume node of this balance area and or these zones. If not, probably coming back up to here. What it looks like to me now, this is just forming a balance area. Right? And then you can judge when it breaks out of there. So I didn't take that trading crude, obviously, but that was the zone that launched out of there. This is, guys, look, I mean, look, look at the power of these things. It's like, they're ridiculous. This is why it's the, the crux of my trading. This is what got me back into the game. I was out of trading. Couldn't make money anymore. Algos were killing me. Held on for seven years too long. I had to leave the business. You guys all know my story. Or you should, if you've been on the prior webinar. You should, I don't mean you should know my story. I mean, if you've been on prior webinars, I've talked about it many times. Right? I had to get out of the game. Dr. Brett, on my website, wrote the book, Enhancing Trading Performance. Again, this is my site. All my stuff's on here. It's in the document, too. Um, He's probably the top trading psychologist on the planet. He's had behind me for a year. Oh, what I was going to do today, too. I have, I finally have the videos of my trading when I was this guy, right? When this, when I made the millions of dollars trading, scalping. I have the videos. I bought three different, three different camcorders off of eBay to transfer the videos because there are only as many DVs because that that's how old I am, right? So the two of them didn't work. I finally got one that worked. I couldn't get it all done. So next week, so this is kind of like a cliffhanger. Next week on the Bookmap webinar, I will show you can watch me flipping 1,000 lots scalping. So that's, um, it, there's really not much to it, but you can, and it's going to be, it's not for kids' ears because I sit there and swear the whole time. But you guys are going to be able to see that next week. So anyway, what I was saying, getting to was this guy sat behind me for a year and watched me as I did that, right, to see what maybe input me in this book. So the point is this guy called me. He knew I was out of the game and said, this was 2017, hey, you may want to look at the software called Bookmap. It reminds me of what you used to do as far as how you used to view the orders in the order book because this is how I used to trade just off the dome. The minute I saw this, I knew I was back, and that was before this stuff. So that has been my evolution. My story, it should resonate with everybody. I went from zero to millionaire. I started out trading one lots, right? Made millions. Couldn't make money anymore. Back down to zero. Had to, had to take up medical sales to support my family because I couldn't make money. Inter introduced to book map, I'm on my way back. So... If this can happen to me, it can happen to you. It should resonate with everybody on this webinar. It's not like I'm some dude on here standing in front of a Lamborghini telling you I never lose on trades and all I've done is make millions in my lifetime.
So that should be inspirational for you, right? So this got down to my official validation price to the tick. Well, that's a real shocker, isn't it? I can't believe it. I wonder if that's going to come back to the zone. Oops, there's my videos from yesterday. Um, hold on here. Let's see. Well, looky, looky. I wonder what's going to happen. I don't want to jinx you guys if you, if you took the ATR trade. So if you took the ATR reversion trade, that's this part of the spreadsheet, 1775. You're out of 2275. Let's see if that happens. Position trading wise, now I got what I wanted to see. We got the ATR. We got, if this comes back, retest failure, now I'll go short. And I can go short this market because any of these markets actually, because the algo guy is in my direction. This is the exponential moving average. I already posted what that was. The trades work way, way better when you're on algo guy sites. I, I will take the, the, hey, look at that. Is that a retest of that? Well, golly, G. Willikers, did that just do an ATR retest of the zone? It's almost like this trade works a little bit. 1775, you're out of 2275. There you go. Right there. And of course, I didn't take this one. Um, your own eyes, right there. If I told you how many times this happens to the eyes, you would fall off your chair. If you're in my room, you see it. You see guys just posting all the time. One ATR work, one ATR work, two ATR work. So that's the trade. Now, if it comes back, I'm going short. Back up to this side. Where do I go short? 16.25, just as long as this is correct. It's 5.80 now. 16.50, I can put on, I'm gonna round up. You don't have to, I'm gonna round up though. It's up to seven, I'm gonna put on seven short MES at 16.50. And this is the barf trade, the bark trade, sorry, change the name. Blind ATR confirmation, retest confirmation. I say six or seven, seven. All right, so if that trades 17 or 1650, I am short. <clears throat> so you see here, I could have opposing positions on. Do I like opposing positions between NASDAQ and ES? Absolutely not, but I, I'm trading off what I see in these markets. I don't, I, I'm not a, like a relative guy. Um, uh, what's the word? Just like a spread type guy where like, oh, NASDAQ, or that actually would be long, short, long, one, short, the one, but a confluence type guy where well I don't want to be I don't want to be long Nasdaq if yes is selling I'm short yes if this is telling if my volume events which is the most important thing I don't know if I've mentioned that about a million times if they say to go short I go short here if they say to go long in Nasdaq I'm going long in Nasdaq yes it's probability yeah but one's probably going to lose one's probably going to win in this instance it doesn't matter you just keep taking them you're like the casino you keep dealing the hands right it's probabilities on the short term everything's random I can randomly be stopped out of these trades. Long term, I know this is the best edge I've ever seen in futures trading. I, I will be profitable as long as I take as many as I can. That's what trading is. It's all in here. You're lucky I'm out of breath right now or I would do my usual rant. Where's that? All right, you guys are lucky I lost the spreadsheet. I mean, my uh, document. Where'd it go? Here it is. You guys are not lucky. Right here. So like I tell my trade room, you have, if you come in my trade room, you have to tattoo this to your forehead, this this document, or at least read it every morning, right? So this tells you why you're a consistent winner. This tells you the five truths about trading. Anything can happen. You don't need to know what's going to happen next. I don't know what's going to happen next. Nobody knows what's going to happen next. Unless, of course, you're the Fed that puts trades on. They used to be able to put trades on, which is ridiculous. Um, don't get me started on that one. There's a random distribution between wins and losses. Random, Right? That means you put them all on, and if you have an edge, which I do, which this is, for any given set of variables to find an edge. So I don't flip out if I have a loser, if I have two losers, if I have three losers. I know that this is the best edge that could possibly be had in the futures market, in my opinion. So I just keep putting them on, and you will make money in the long run. I will make money in the long run if I follow my rules. My rules are all set out in my trades, in my trading strategies, and in my spreadsheet. Where I get in, get out. And that's it. Like I said, the position trading is a little more subjective where I get out, but it's <clears throat> still pretty straightforward. All right, Bruce, any, uh, I'm seriously lightheaded. I've been chirping so much. No, no, we're all good, uh, Scott. I think uh, we're all caught up on questions here. It's good to have you back in here where I'm not having to read all the questions, too. That, that's nice. Glad you can take time out of your day to entertain entertain the webinar. <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah. It, it's, I'm sure uh, you missed the razzing as well. <laughs> well, it, it, it's tough. I mean, there's so many things going on uh, over in Bookmap, as you know, and, and we've added a lot more streamers now, as you've probably seen. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's just, it's just not possible. Um, but uh, uh, that was fun, though. Uh, you know, that was, uh, uh, you know, being on the webinar with you and also JTrader, but uh, I just can't, can't do it anymore. Right. Yeah. All right. So waiting for a fill on the short potentially. And remember, I can still potentially go along or short this NASDAQ setup too. I don't think this has ever got the, maybe it did. Let's see. If this invalidated, then I can't put on the short. What was that price? Just make sure this is up to date. Like I've been saying this entire webinar. What is it? It is 29.0. Let's get to the short invalidation price. Twenty nine. I think it did. Oh, does that is that the exact tick? That's a real surprise. And few stock stock sell and few three hundred eight contracts. All right, new setup in Nasdaq. I couldn't go short because of it, but now there's a new one. Like I said, guys, don't chase anything. There's always another setup right around the corner. I am short a yes. I think that reversion trade worked, but why did I not get? Did I not get? What did I do wrong there? The reversion work, trade in NASDAQ worked perfectly too. So did you see? So you see what I'm talking about? This reversion trade worked both both ways. It worked from here to there and there in the NASDAQ, and it worked from uh, there to there in the S. Right? It's just it's ridiculous how often it happens. All right, so I'm short. It's like I got filled with a tick as usual. Now here comes the torture. But I follow my rules, guys. This is how this is trading, right? I. I mapped it out. I, I have a, my rules based on this is the it's actually the bark trade now. Put that on. Got short of 1650. My stops at 3275. And I know what a lot of you guys are saying. What the hell? He's risking. What are you? You're risking 16 points on an ES trade. I like to risk two points. I, I, <laughs> I like to risk two points too. I don't risk two points because the volatility and the zone is telling me I have to risk that to stay out of Algo Algoville to get stopped out of my trades, right? So I am making this trade for me to be proven wrong on this particular trade. Not only does it have to come back an ATR here, it's got to get through the event and it's got to get an ATR here. There are ways to trade this more aggressively. I talk about actually the ultra aggressive entry in my course where you get in the minute it breaks below the zone after you see the event, you stop out right, you get out right above. Like this one, you'd still be in. Very little risk on, in that, on that type of entry, right? I am too old for this game especially when it does this and you can, you can enter a couple times. Again, I talk about, all about it on the, in the new course. I demand the ATRs to get in, ATRs to get out. It just keeps my mind clear. I'm watching so many markets. I don't have to be on top of the trade, but I say this every webinar. This is the science. How you trade it is the art. I give you a couple different ways to trade ATRs, so I'm risking more points. What do you change? Do I train, change my risk? Do I impose my will on the market? No, I change my size. So say this was a two ATR. Well, look at that, right? Now I can put on 14 because I'm risking a lot less. So I, I, I adjust the volatility. I don't impose my static stops into these markets. And if you're doing that, I'm telling you, you're not gonna make it over the long run. You may get away with it for a while. You're not gonna make it. These markets don't care that you wanna risk two points. These markets care about this stuff, right? So please stop, do yourself a favor. Stop getting algoed on whipsaws. Like I showed you that NASDAQ trade. If I got out, if I panicked out of that thing, I would, I would have missed a 200 point move, right? I didn't. It didn't stop me out because it didn't get a full ATR above that event I showed you. I stayed in the trade the whole way down to the blue look. I got out of some on the way down, but I got out of the rest of the blue look. All right, so this may be a tough area to get through, and I know that, but you know, if, when you look at my trading strategies, do I say, I don't put on trades if it's into the, into the spot gamma level, major spot gamma level? You could. Put this in there. I'm not saying you have to trade in these exact strategies like I'm trading them, but you see my bark trade. It doesn't take any trade on SI volume event that has an ATR retest. This is supposed to be confirmed. We've changed it, not fail. Confirm. But you don't see unless it's in the spot gamma level, right? What does that mean? That means I that, that's not part of my trade plan. So I'm taking the trade. You could say I take all trades, all bark trades, unless they're in the major spot gamma levels or Major lows, I don't take those. Absolutely fine. Go ahead. That's probably a good idea, right? Like right here, 
like this setup in NASDAQ. Do you want to take that into the lug? This has a very good chance of bouncing off the lugs. I don't know if I mentioned these things today. This one broke. This one will probably bounce because it's gone down so much. I don't know. I said probably. Nobody knows. Right? But my point is you can come up with your own rules, take my stuff, and then and then mold it to your to your the way you want to trade. Right, what's this? This is almost threshold here. It's not quite. You can see, look, look at the look at the information you get here, right? So this was a little bit of ice. This is the same house. They brought it down, and they're still buying it. That's just that. I mean, we're, we're, how do you see that on a bar chart? You don't. It's incredible information, right? And we have ways to take advantage of it. Like I tell you guys all the time, these markets are completely 100% manipulated and rigged. Actually, I'm going to draw this because you had 200 here, another 600 here. So I can trail my stop now to this event. So watch how I do this. The point is, if you can't beat them, join them. You can see what they're doing. They're playing games all day long on you. Well, at least you can see what they're doing now. It's just huge, right? It's like, this is why I'm still trading. If I didn't have this, I would not be trading. I'd be sitting in a doctor's office in his waiting room, getting coughed on, waiting to go show him my latest medical product, kissing his ass, which is really fun. Minus the fun part. All right, let's get this up here. Anything wrong with it? You guys got to make a living. I understand. That's why I had to do it. But I'm saying, if you want to do this for a living, this is the this is the edge that that I've seen, the best edge I've ever seen. Right. So take it, take it, and do what you want with it. So the the good thing about this now is I can put this in the spreadsheet. So remember where my stop was. I just got done talking about risking 16 points. Well, guess what? Now I could trail my stop, and it's not because I don't want to lose money. It's because there's a new volume event that the market cares about. Now plug this in and watch how my stop changes. 15 quarter down to four. That should be on the exact price. Why is that on the exact price? That's why. So I, I I merged two together here. This wasn't threshold by itself. I used 700 as my threshold. It was pretty close on its own. But we saw that yellow line. That's the same house. And there was 200 over here. So that's 800. That's my zone. 15 quarter, 14. Plug that in the spreadsheet. Now watch how this changes. So my original stop on my short that I'm short is 32.75. Now I put this in. I forgot the zone because I can't remember five seconds ago. 44.14. APR. 5.79. It's right. It's exactly what it is, pretty much. All right. So now my stops at 22. So I just knocked off. 13 points of risk off of this trade. So let's see where I just don't want to step out in that prior event, which I would be. We're pretty close. So you can do one of two things here. I don't like stopping out in, I already talked about this, in prior events because you, it, this market very likely will come here, hit this, and then do this. Why? Because the traders got run over and need to get out. I already covered that too. I personally don't have to do this, right? You can leave it there. I'm going to move it up to there. I'm already saving some, so it's, now I'm not saving 13 points, but I'm going to get it out of that zone. So instead of here, I'm moving it there. That's my personal preference. You could just stop out normally here. And now, now you're not really risking this five points on this trade, or five and a half points, because we got in at 1650, right? I'm going to move it. Demand, it pushes through that zone. So my stop's going to be 2650. Once again, you can do whatever you want to do. You can heed my advice, trade how I trade incorporate the rules I use or add your own stuff in. Right? So now there's a way, potentially, I could add to this trade. What do I need to see? Validation point. Remember, we're waiting for the last one. What's the new one? The new one is 08 quarter. And I can trade this thing the same way. So you can see on trending days, uh, you could have multiple positions on. You got one position on. I could put two positions on. You get another setup, three, four, five, however many. And all you're really doing is trailing your stop to that last event. And then you make money on that one, that one, that one. You just lose on the, on the last one. See how that works? So let's see what happens there. Well, we're already, wow. I've been on this for an hour 40, Bruce. I didn't realize that. Is that right? Yeah. Wow. It doesn't, time flies when you're talking nonstop. <laughs> All right, well, I mean, I'm into, I'm into the, uh, the Tom B guy, right? Does he? Pref uh, yeah, perform? yeah. It would probably be best to, uh, to to wrap it up if we can. Okay. All right. So I mean, you guys are seeing. Well, this is what I do. I do this every day in my trade room. This is how I trade. 
Um, once again, new course, it's in that, it's in that, um, and the document post, should have posted it. And then you got the spreadsheet if you guys want access to this. If you can't get in the room, you got this. But this is, this is how I trade, the best edge I've ever seen. This is all the information you need to do this, you know, to be a profitable trader, in my opinion. So, otherwise, you got questions, you can always email me, come in my room. You can fire questions all day there. There are a lot of traders that have been in there a long time, capable traders that can answer your questions as well, and I'm answering there as well. So, other than that, Bruce, if there's no other major questions, that's uh, all she wrote. Yep, yep. No, thank you very much, Scott. And uh, uh, yeah, I put all the links into the chat there. Uh, and uh, uh, we'll then, uh, uh, Scott's here every Thursday. Uh, we'll see you next Thursday, Scott. Okay, yeah, and quickly, I'm watching Blue Lug here. I'm watching Baby Lug. I'll, I'll piece out of some of these, potentially. Baby Lug is, it looks like it's gonna be confluent with the bottom of this prior one, which is close to this point of control. If not, it's Blue Lug is my main target uh, for that. And then also tune in next week, because this is what I'm gonna show my old trading. You guys can see what I'm talking about, flipping the, flipping the huge size and listening to me swear it should be quite quite entertaining so i'll see you guys next thursday thanks bruce thanks scott bye-bye appreciate it bye